It's Power Back Time on the Gutsy Podcast. Each episode brings you five minutes of condensed inspiration to reclaim the courage and momentum you've unintentionally given away. You've got big things to do, so let's get your power back. Happy fucking new year, my friends. This is the very first Power Back episode of 2023, and I've already decided that we're just going to like rip the tablecloth off this year. Just in case you're listening to the Gutsy Podcast for the first time, or maybe you're coming back to it after quite some time because, you know, shit happens and a new year comes and you're like, oh yeah, I should get back to that thing that I was doing. My name is Laura Ora. I'm an alignment coach and your host and guide on this journey through the Gutsy Podcast. My goal and role in your life is to help guide you back to your own version of alignment to help you rediscover who the fuck you are and what you actually truly want in this life. Why does that matter? Look, women particularly have lived forever in a day under this rock of shoulds. I should dress like this. I should talk like that. I should work my way up the corporate ladder. I should get married and have children and buy a house. I should run my business this certain way. Look, the list of shoulds go on and on. Before you know it, you end up living this diluted version of who you actually are by honoring who you truly are. And look, if you're like, Laura, I'm not really even sure who that is, that's okay. This is part of that process, is to get back to who you were before the world told you what you should be. And I also want to emphasize that it's not about getting back to a version of you, rather honoring the parts of you that still ring true while honoring and allowing your truest most vibrant version of you here, today, in this moment. These Power Back episodes are like mini coaching sessions. So if you're listening to these and you're like, you know what, this guidance, this advice is really ringing true to me, I offer coaching programs at lauraora.com. I've got some short term, I've got some longer term, um, some group stuff that's going to be coming up in 2023. So lauraora.com is the best place to find all the different ways that we can work together. And I also get pretty unhinged over on TikTok. So if that's more your cup of tea and you want to learn more about my coaching style and the wisdom that I love to share with you, I am at that Laura Aura on TikTok and also Instagram. So let's start this new year with some mind fuckery, shall we? Speaking of TikTok, I went back and looked at some of my most viral and successful pieces of content. And it seems to be that the more raw, candid, and direct that I am with you all, the more you like it. I've been leading a lot of content lately with mindfuckery. Like, oh, here's your Tuesday morning mindfuckery. Here's your Sunday morning mindfuckery. And the point of this is to get into your brain and to shift the way that you've been thinking. Look, I'm not trying to change you. You don't need changed. But I'm guessing that if you're listening to me, if you are visiting my platforms, if you are tuning into this podcast, it's because there is more calling you. There is a part inside of you that is stirring I often call people like you a firework in a box. There is magic waiting to come up and out and show the world. This is where your brilliance is. This is where you're saying yes to yourself. This is where you are expanding. And because of your expansion, you're impacting people around you in the most incredible positive way that you can't even wrap your face around yet. So if you're looking for more ease, simplicity, success, expansion in your life, then today's power back coaching session is a thousand percent for you. I'll also toss out there that I know a lot of you are listening as you're doing shit. You're doing shit around your house, you're running errands, you're driving somewhere, you may be working. Um, If safe and possible, have something to jot down notes with, whether it's a voice memo on your phone, a notepad, certainly don't do any of these things while you are driving or operating heavy machinery. I feel like a disclaimer label here. Um, But my style is to give you energetic expansion, meaning we're talking about your body and your mind and your soul and like what's calling you energetically, followed by grounded practical action. Look, you can have your head up in the clouds all day long and that serves the most valuable, beautiful space. But if we don't put action behind those things, your dreams and desires are not going to come busting down your fucking door looking for you. So combining these two things is essential. And it's it's my style. It's the way that I teach. It's the way that I guide you. So today we're going to walk through three pieces of mindfuckery. 
let me first give you a little bit of a playing field here. So when I infuse this information to you, think of going down a dirt road. Maybe it's in a car, maybe it's on a bike. This is a dirt road that has been there since the beginning of fucking time, right? You can very clearly see where the wheels have gone. There's that big hump in the center. There are the two grooves on the left and right side. And when you turn down that road, your car just snaps right into that. That's exactly what is happening with your beliefs, your thoughts, your habits, and your patterns. You've done something for so long or believed something for so long that your brain is theoretically looking for the tracks in your life. When I say mindfuckery, what I am saying is I am giving you information to help you create a new path, to help you say, you know what, at first this might feel a little uncomfortable. This might feel a little unnatural. I'm not really sure I know what I'm doing. But I know that the road that I've been going down is not leading me to where I truly want to be. So I'm willing to lean into the discomfort. I'm willing to create a new track and I'm willing to create new life scenarios to call in those desires closer to me. So today we're going to walk through three pieces of mindfuckery to help create some new tracks. These might sting at first. Know that it's always with love and it's always to get you closer to where you actually want to be. Mindfuckery piece number one is the phrase, I can't. I can't go back to school. I can't raise my prices. I can't move halfway across the country. Insert whatever it is. It can be the smallest, tiniest thing. It can be an enormous life-changing scenario and it can be everything in between. Here's the mindfuckery, my friend. It's not that you can't do something. It's not even that you think you can't do something. Rather, it's that you believe that you're not allowed to do it. (laughs) Okay. See why I call this mindfuckery? Look, we put these uh, roofs on top of our abilities. You walk around and you truly start to believe that you can't do something for X, Y, Z reasons. More often than not, this comes back to the weight of the shoulds. And that weight usually comes back to other people's thoughts, feelings, and expectations of you. Because guess what? You're trying something new. You're going against the grain. You're doing something that maybe someone in your family has never done before. What, whatever is happening, it's a new thing. And we put the weight and the possibility in the hands of other people. So I'm going to shift that question back to you. Is it truly that you can't or... Have you convinced yourself that you're not allowed to? Here's a few things that you can do when this pops up. First and foremost, you must recognize whenever you start saying, I can't. I can't do this. I can't do that. Whatever you're filling in the can't with, notice when you say that. Because knowledge is power. And when you have the knowledge and the awareness around what is happening, that gives you the ability to start making subtle shifts. When you notice that you say, I can't, then ask yourself, what am I fearing right now? Is this true or have I put the weight of this in someone else's hands? Am I making something true about myself that's really not? Maybe I made it up in my brain. From there, you can recognize what the root of that is or at least get a whole lot closer. And then you can go even further and say, what is it that I truly believe? What is it that I actually want? And if it's not insanely clear yet, play in the space of what if. Nine and a half times out of 10, it's not that you can't, it's that you won't until today. Today is your chance. Today is your opportunity to say, you know what? Maybe that scared me before, but I can. And I'll find a way because it's important to me. Mind fuckery number two today. The thing that you want the most is often behind the thing that you resist the most. I will say that one more time. The thing that you want the most is often behind the thing that you resist the most. Let me give you a quick example. I have been on a journey to regain my health. It's been a priority for quite some time. I've been working with a nutritionist who said, Laura, you really need to switch your morning routine and eat breakfast before you drink your coffee. And I was like, well, damn. I have been drinking coffee on an empty stomach for probably at least the last 15 years. I'm seeing the science. I'm seeing the data. Hell, it's popping up on my TikTok feed. Like people are like, this is fucking life-changing. And I know that, okay? I'm seeing 
seeing people have actual true results. But I resist that like hell. I want to feel better, which is the thing that I want the most. Yet I'm resisting it. Why is that? Why do we do that? Like, if you're like, okay, I know that I want financial freedom, so why do I keep sabotaging my finances? I know that I want to change my job, but I never look for a new one. Well, there are some mental grooves that have been dug into your brain. The big one that always pops up is fear. Fear of change, fear of the unknown, fear of things not working. Like, fear is, fear loves to drive, okay? Fear loves to get in the car and be like, look, everybody saddle up. I'm driving us. I'm taking us to wherever the hell I want to go. The obvious problem with that is that it takes us to a place that we don't belong. The other big thing that is causing resistance is change. Resistance to change. I didn't want to stop drinking coffee first because I had a routine. This is how I've been doing things. I'm comfortable. I know what to do. I've got a whole thing going on. Like I don't want to change that. The reality is your comfort is not going to get you to where you truly want to be. I wanted my health, so that meant I needed to get uncomfortable. I needed to be willing to change my routine. And the third thing is lack of self-belief. What that boils down to is you don't think that you're capable of doing it, or you're not worthy of this change. Oh shit, there it is. It's a worthiness issue. Look, when you start to recognize things that you push back on, This gives you so much knowledge and power. It's like it shines a fucking beacon of light onto the things that you actually want. So if you're having a little bit of trouble right now saying like, you know, everything is really kind of mucky. I'm not even sure what I want right now. Look at the things that you're resisting. So the first thing to do here is, again, recognize where you're resisting things. Write down some of your immediate goals. What are some things that you desire in your life and in your business? And then look at how you may be resisting those things. And just so you know, I did get uncomfortable. I did change my habit and I started eating breakfast for before my coffee. And wouldn't you know, I'm not bloated every single day of my life anymore. I'm having like whole ass regular adult turds. And from coming from someone with celiac and IBS for the last 20 years, that's a big fucking deal. Discomfort leads to change. Change leads to the things you truly desire. The final piece of mind fuckery today is your need to have things all figured out. I can't tell you how many times I've had conversations with women who start talking about their dreams and their desires and what they want to do. And I can literally see them light up like a fucking firework, right? They are alive. They're excited. And then immediately, boom, just like a light switch, they start talking themselves out of it. I don't have enough time. I don't have enough money. I've always done it this way. I can't do it because of this person. I can't do it because of that job. You insert the reason, women will find the reason why they cannot have what they desire. I can promise you that if this ever happens and I am in front of you, you will see my eyebrows go up. You will get the look because I'm going to challenge you. Are all of those things actually true? Or have you already decided that you're not worthy of having what you truly want? Your need to have everything perfected in order and figured out is cock blocking your potential. That's right. I said it. You want more in your life. You want more in your business. You want to feel happy. You want to expand. You want to do the things that light you up. Like you just want to feel peaceful. And you're trying to control every single part of that. And usually what a company's control is forcing with time, trying to make things happen, pushing things into boxes, like forcing things to go down a road that you want it to go down instead of allowing yourself to sit back into it and lean into the possibility Look, I know that this may seem like floofy or whatever the hell you want to call it, but the truth is you can't control everything. And if you do try to control everything, that's why you're not getting the things that you truly want. It's also why you keep getting the same results that you've gotten in the past and why you continue to learn maybe some not so awesome lessons. I'll also say that failure and lessons can serve a really valuable role in your life if you listen to it. If you lean into it, if you say, okay, that didn't go great, what did I learn from that? How can I do this differently next time instead of going down the same path? It's also a lot of 
overthinking. This is how it should be done. I should have it done in this amount of time. I should be like this. I should do it like that. Again, more shoulds. So how do you work through this? Well, giving yourself permission to take messy action. To say, you know what? I know that this is uncomfortable. Maybe this is not the way that I've typically worked in the past. This is not how I've usually done things before. So this feels scary. I'm going to honor that. I honor that I'm doing this and I feel scared. But I'm willing to try something different so that I can get a different result, so that I can see the success that I want, so that I can feel the peace and expansion that I know is out there. Like I see it every fucking day. Let me try something new to see if that works better. So always, 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 first and foremost, get connected with your vision. What is it that you truly want? Not what you think you should, what you truly want. And then go into the mindset that done is better than perfect. I am going to allow myself to take messy action. If it fails, great, I'm going to learn something. Something doesn't go as planned, that's okay, it's a reroute. Getting something in movement, completing something, putting something into the marketplace, starting to sell something, whatever it is that you're doing, allowing yourself to put a little bit of it out there, it's like a game right? Like you're moving and you're shaking and you're shifting things around and you get to feel into it. When you're trying to perfectly craft things in the air without any, like there's no container. It's just like in your head and in your thousand different notebooks that you got from Staples. Look, I'm all about the stationery as well, so I feel you. When it's all up in this big open container, there's so much assumption that's happening. When you allow yourself to take messy action, it's like taking pieces of the puzzle out of your brain and putting it down in front of you. The picture gets so much more clear with each piece that you put down. And that's all I'm asking you to do here. Allow yourself to take messy action and take a piece or three pieces or 10 pieces and put it down and put it in front of you so you can start to see it, feel it, and act on it. I know releasing control can feel really scary. I've been down that road myself, but I can promise you that the stress release that it provides you by saying, you know what, it's out of my head. There's some action behind it. I get to see it start to come to life instead of laying in my bed for copious amounts of hours thinking about it. I'm not thinking about all this stuff anymore. I'm actually starting to see it in front of me. That feeling is, a, it's priceless. It's fucking priceless. I just gave you a handful of ways that you can start to take grounded, practical action. Ways for you to see and recognize that dirt road that's in your mind. And you can start to visualize what that other direction might look and feel like. If you're not sure where to start, choose one. Choose the one that made you go, ooh, you know, the one that like kind of jabbed you in the side a little bit. That's probably the one that's calling towards you the most. And if you're like, you know what, I need some guidance and support on this journey, go to lauraora.com and set up a discovery call. I've got a couple of different ways that we can work together. Let's talk through which one works best for you and we'll take it from there. Next week on the Gutsy Podcast, we are talking about sales. And if the word sales like, or like makes you feel some kind of way, this particular episode is talking about shifting sales to service, being of service to your clients, being of service to the people that you are working with. It's a huge shift in the energy and really opens up the doors for a lot of opportunities. I play the most on TikTok and Instagram. You can find me using at that Laura Aura. And as always, until I see you next time, stay gutsy.